Hi everybody, welcome to VLSI Point. So today we are going to start another playlist and this is based on static timing analysis. In this playlist we are going to cover both theoretical and the numerical part of STA. STA stands for static timing analysis. It is very important subject for your interview point of view if you are looking to get a job in core electronic companies. This subject playlist is available in both Hindi and English. You can watch as per your convenience. So without any delay, let's get started today's video. First, we will start with the timing analysis. What is timing analysis and then different types of timing analysis. So timing analysis is nothing but a methodical analysis of a digital circuit to determine if the timing constraints imposed by the components or the interface are met or not. So typically this means that you are trying to meet all setup, hold and pulse width timing requirements. Timing analysis is an integral part of ASIC or VLSI design flow. Anything can be uh, compromised but not this timing analysis. Clock, sequential, components all are the basis of timing analysis. And yes, here I am talking about the flip flops, latches and all. So this timing analysis is mainly of two types, dynamic timing analysis and static timing analysis, DTA and STA. So what is DTA? So dynamic timing analysis, it verifies the functionality of the design by applying input signal and then checking it for correct output signals. Mean to say it verifies timing in the functional context by applying stimulus. So in case of dynamic timing analysis, we will verify the functionality and the timing of the design by applying some stimulus to the design. So what we uh, need to do, if there is a top level design, so we need to write a test bench and in that test bench, we do the stimulus generation. All that set of stimulus will be applied to your top level design and whatever output will be generated, that will be monitored to check whether the circuit is following all the timing constraints or not. This DTA ensures that design is working fine even in the worst case scenario. And this can be done by driving real stimulus or in other words I can say it ensures that the design is going to work at the desired frequency by driving the inputs. However, in case of STA, it can be carried out in an input independent manner means in case of STA you need not to apply any set of inputs. It ensures that all the paths in the logic circuits are free of timing violation. So most of the time you just hear about STA and not for the DTA because in industries you need to perform the static timing analysis and not the dynamic timing analysis. So what is the reason? Why not we perform the DTA and why frequently we perform STA only? So definitely I will discuss that point in our last slide. So watch this video till end and don't skip any part. So now we are going to cover this STA part in detail. So as we all know STA stands for static timing analysis and this is one of the technique in digital design which verifies the circuit in terms of timing. So in STA you are capable to verify every path without applying any input and if everything is not happening at a proper time then proper circuit operation can't be guaranteed. Obviously if there is any delay in any of the input signal then definitely your circuit will not perform as per the expectation. In case of STA you need not to perform the simulation of complete circuit. On the basis of multiple paths you can determine whether the circuit is following all the timing constraints or not. And obviously it's, it plays a very important role to check whether your circuit is performing accurately or not. So now the question arises why this timing analysis is important, why we need to perform it. Can we design a circuit without performing this timing analysis, whether your circuit will operate properly or not. So see, STA is one of the three most important design constraints of any chip and these three constraints are first one is power consumption. Second one is timing analysis of the chip and third one is area of the fabrication. So whatever circuit you are designing there is a trade off between area power and timing means whatever circuit you are designing there is a trade off between area power and timing means you cannot optimize all the three things at the same time. If you want to reduce the area definitely that time maybe there will be some changes in the timing or area would increase. If you want to reduce the area then that time maybe the power will increase or there is a 
a change in timing analysis so what we try we try to optimize all the three things an ideal circuit should not have the high power consumption it should follow all the timing constraints and its area should be as small as possible so timing analysis is one of the most important criteria and as a design engineer you must keep in mind while designing a circuit so here you can see a circuit i have designed input we are applying here you can see and from input to output one this is the path and from input to output two this is the path so whatever is the circuit there are multiple possible path and in case of sta we analyze all possible path where these paths are following all the timing constraints or not or there is any violation of the time so in sta our main aim is to ensure that all the possible signals all the signals in the circuit will arrive neither too early nor too late so that we can confirm the proper and efficient operation of the circuit so yes this sta verifies timing in each path of the logic circuit without applying any stimulus and our aim is to check whether all the signals are reaching at proper time neither early nor late so what is the difference between sta and dta sta is much faster as compared to dta what is the reason so many possible combinations will be generated in case of dta because we are applying set of stimulus so suppose there are 16 number of input lines so 2 to the power 16 number of combinations will be generated for the input which is a time taking process and we may not be possible to cover all the possible combination so dta provides incomplete timing coverage however in case of sta first we find all possible paths and then we perform the timing analysis so it provides exhaustive timing coverage in sta we need not to apply any kind of input vector however in case of dta we need to apply stimulus vectors and its analysis depends on the quality of stimulus which we are applying in sta it is more efficient why because it requires less memory and cpu resources as compared to dta and obviously we know in case of dta large number of input is generating so it requires higher amount of uh, memory and the cpu resources so this is the basic difference between sta and dta and this is only the reason why we prefer more sta as compared to dta so i hope today's lecture is clear to you if you have any doubt let me know in the comment box don't forget to like the video if you just understand all the concept subscribe vlsi point because here you will get all the important vlsi subjects for your exams for your interviews don't forget to join our community vlsi point that is our telegram group because there you can discuss you can ask all the doubts there you will get important study materials and the most important thing if you are looking for jobs for internships you can tell in that group and got you can tell in that group and will get some good referrals so guys it's time to sign off we will meet in the next video don't forget to watch the next part there we are going to cover false path propagation delay and multi cycle path so see you soon